welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Good Monday morning, and welcome to the 91st episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Before I dive in today, I want to apologize. I have a little bit of a head cold, so it's a little more nasally than normal. (laughs) But uh, I am feeling, for the most part, 90%, and I've been wanting to share with you some thoughts about a book that I mentioned in this last week's This and That that has really struck a chord with me in a very powerful way. So today's episode is all about the power of solitude, and we're going to dive deep into that with regards to happiness, with regards to whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, why it is necessary, because it really has nothing to do with your personality. And what I mean by that, it's what we gain by taking time to ourselves. But before I get into that, let me just give you an idea of what today's petit plaisir is. It is a new podcast. Well, it's not a new podcast. It's a new podcast that I have begun listening to. And I don't know why I haven't listened to it sooner. Some of you may already have, but if you haven't, I cannot wait to share with you. I think you're going to love it, especially if you're a Francophile. Okay, let's get into today's episode. I want to start with the transcendentalist Henry David Thoreau. He spent, as many of you know, two years in a cabin, a very small, tiny cabin, no larger than maybe 40 square feet on the shores or just off of the shores of Walden Pond in the beautiful little town in Massachusetts, Concord. Keep him in mind. Now also keep in mind a more modern writer, Elizabeth Gilbert. Her best-selling book that sold over 10 million copies, Eat, Pray, Love, had her on a journey through Italy, through India, and Indonesia. Much of that time was spent by herself or meeting new people, but it was time that she was with herself, listening, following, and figuring out her path. But then let me take you back a couple decades, about a century actually. Albert Einstein, he is revealed that he took great inspiration from his regular long walks on a beach to just be with his thoughts. So we have three people from three different centuries almost, but overlapping obviously, but in different time periods. And all of them are obviously talented. We are still talking about them today. All of them have been impressive and successful in the path they have pursued. And what they each demonstrate is that Having time alone is a power, and I would argue a necessary ingredient to a happy life. There are many, many more people who speak of this power of solitude, and I'll provide a link to that on today's show notes from the blog Zen Habits. He wrote a fantastic post about all the different people that we recognize currently and in history that have found the power of solitude, as well as other avenues they've found power in. But solitude is one of the primary ones. Now, the amount of solitude each of us needs will be different. That is absolutely guaranteed, and that is based on our personality. For me to say, you need to spend two entire years, just like Thoreau, would be torturous to many of us. Now, I want to condition his two-year stay that he, every Sunday, would go have dinner with his mother. So he wasn't just in the cabin. He was exploring. He was out in the woods, and then he would go nearby and spend time with family. But there are other people that will just need 30 minutes a day to themselves. There's a vast continuum, and all of us will, will fall somewhere along that continuum. Regardless, in, in some capacity, solitude, though, is, is, is a vital ingredient to make sense of our, quote, deeper nature. As Frederick Lenore points out repeatedly in his best-selling book, Happiness, A Philosopher's Guide. Understanding our deeper nature is the key to unlocking the door to true happiness. Quote, happiness consists in living in accordance with our deeper nature. People can never be happy if they go against their deeper nature. Again, from Lenore. And the key to discovering what indeed our deeper nature is, 
is solitude. But what if you are a person who enjoys the company of others, the energy, the vibrancy, the electricity of the company of more people? Then little solitude will be most likely all that you will need, all that you will need to seek. But it is in the moments of solitude that you have time to discern this. What do you need to be happy Or am I conforming to others' expectations and am then only happy when they are happy with my behavior? So then, therefore, am I really truly happy because I'm not in tune with my deeper nature? Solitude gives us each the time to reflect without judgment and without impediment. It also allows us time to determine why things may feel off track or off kilter in different moments of our lives. And then it allows us the opportunity to see with clarity how to return or change directions to then become, or to get back in sync, I should say. With that said, solitude is something we must invest in regularly. We must build it into our schedules and grant ourselves this this treasure when we realize something feels off or we are overwhelmed or we aren't able to think clearly because we have so many things buzzing around us, so many responsibilities, so many people asking for us to do something. Maybe it's even us. We're saying, you have to do this in our own minds. Sometimes we have to step away from that expectation and say, why do I think I have to do that? And that's what solitude will give you, that opportunity. Sometimes if we don't do this consciously, our lives will take matters into their own hands. My weekend is a perfect, this past weekend is a perfect example of this. A cold, as I said, grabbed a hold of me and has kept me inside all weekend. And I was eager. We had fresh snow this weekend on the mountain. I so wanted to get out and go do and no, no, but, but there is, there is, there is a gem in every obstacle. I had two days to become clear on a few other things that I wasn't necessarily trying to avoid, but I didn't really realize that I needed to address a few things. My body was telling me I needed to slow down. I need to figure out how to balance things a little bit better, put my priorities straight. But I wouldn't have done this had I not taken the time. And I didn't think I had the time because I wanted to go, 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 go. And that's also because I'm thoroughly loving my life. So that's not a bad thing. But at the same time, if something feels off, then there is, a, there is a calling within you to say, slow down, find a moment of solitude and figure this out. You don't have to stay in solitude forever, <laughs> just as long as you need. And then you'll find this amazing benefit and you'll find an answer and you'll find a direction and you'll find the path and you'll come out charging and ready to go again. Now with that time, I was able to reassess a few things, reflect and consider what is working and what is not. And it was pretty clear. It was pretty clear. I just needed to give my brain that time, that time. And so in fact, I've come with a few things that are going to happen here on the podcast and in the blog, some changes, and I'll be announcing those in the next couple of weeks. So I'm excited about them. So be sure to check back in the next couple next couple of weeks. Um, we will have those announced. But what I've also realized, realized over the course of these past six years of creating the Simply Luxurious Life brand is that sometimes things work well for a certain duration And then things need to shift again to another gear to keep the momentum going to reach the desired result that you set at the beginning. The same is true with our lives. Not everything needs to be changed, but some things will need to and some things will need to remain constant. But you may come to realize that the training wheels you had on at the beginning are no longer needed and are only actually slowing you down and depleting you of energy that you don't need to be giving up. I have come to realize these tough truths when I am in my own company. I can't come to them when I'm with another person, even if it's someone that I can talk to. Often I will have to come to the realization and then maybe go to someone and flesh that out, but I still have to come to that realization on my own to be at peace with it. Upon having time to be with our thoughts, we come to discover our deeper nature our true selves. And as Lunar states, to be happy means firstly, to satisfy the needs and aspirations of our being. A person inclined, for example, to si- to silence will seek solitude. Someone who likes to talk will seek the company of others. Just as birds live in the air and fish live in water, everyone needs to move in the atmosphere that suits them. And when we can dial into what activities, pursuits, 
will give us both purpose and pleasure as he reiterates throughout the book, the balance is key to true fulfillment. We will then realize that by, quote, developing our sensibilities, strengthening our character, honing our gifts and our tastes, these count more than the external objects that may give us just pleasure alone. So I'm going to circle back. It all begins with solitude. No matter how much or how little, take time to yourself to get to know yourself, understand your language, so to speak, so that you can speak as fluently as you dare in your everyday life. That fluency is what will make you truly happy because you're allowing your deeper nature to come forth and you're living it and reveling in it every single day. Now, don't succumb to the societal fear mongering that alone time is equivalent to being lonely. After all, Paul Tillich has a beautiful retort that I want to share to this fallacy. Quote, language has created the word loneliness to express the pain of being alone. And it has created the word solitude to express the glory of being alone. End quote. Anyone who has experienced the rewards after taking time to themselves will dismiss the ignorant statement of being lonely as someone who has yet to discover its power, because the power will prove to be the reason to invest in solitude all the more. The power of solitude is that it opens the door to what will make us happy. We then have to have the courage to pursue that path. But you see, as William Arthur Ward reminds, happiness is an inside job. We hold the keys to realizing what will give us purpose, what will give us pleasure along the way just enough, but not too much to detract us from our pursuits. We possess that. We must become comfortable in our own company so we can find the happiness that we seek. Some, maybe many, will not understand our path or our trajectory initially, and maybe not ever, but so long as we are content, at peace, and in alignment with our deeper nature, it won't matter. Now. Here's my call to action for you. I encourage you to look at your schedule. When can you carve out some time for solitude? I do hope you enjoy this time, whatever or how much or how little it is. Revel in it. Find the power in it. It has amazing gifts to reveal to you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the power of solitude. I'll provide links to other episodes and posts that you might enjoy, as well as a link to the book um, and posts I uh, referenced in today's episode, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 91. Now stay tuned for a podcast. I think you're going to want to tune into. I'll see you in just a few. All right, this week's Petit Plaisir is a podcast for the Francophiles. I, as you know, am taking French classes to improve my French, and it is going to take some time. I know that. But I figure if I surround myself with enough different mediums of ways to learn, it will help. But it also helps if something is enjoyable. And I have found a podcast that is just that. It is called Talk in French, and it's produced by Frederick Babard. And he also has a blog with all sorts of blog posts on very specific topics, most misused, most used, ways to get around and visit tourism sites in France and Paris his website and therefore then his blog and podcast are a wealth of a resource. And I've also included it on my Francophile recommendations as well as today's podcast uh, show notes. So don't worry, I will provide a link to everything. But his production quality is very high. And the one that I um, just recently listened to was his first one. I've kind of saved a bunch of random ones, but his very first one caught my attention. And it's all about the French women. What are the myths? What are the truths? And I love hearing it from a man's perspective. And it's very much in alignment with what we talk about here on The Simple Luxurious Life and The Simple Sophisticate. But at the end of each episode, he also provides a short little vocab opportunity and, and shares a handful of vocab terms and pronounces them. And and then he also talks a bit about grammar. And so you have many lessons at the end of each of his episodes. And he has about 50 episodes that you can tune into. I highly recommend it. I think you're thoroughly going to enjoy it. If you have 
20 to 15 minutes, you pop in that one episode as you're driving to work or walking the dog or on your travels, and you will be speaking French to your travel mate, your um, fellow dog walkers, and um, you'll be surprised how quickly you pick up on little things. But like I said, it's more than just learning it. It's enjoying the process, and he makes it quite enjoyable. So Talk in French podcast, you can find it on iTunes, but you will also find the link on today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 91. I hope you've enjoyed this week's petit pleasure, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or a podcast. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the Simply Luxurious Life dot com or pick up the book choosing the simply luxurious life a modern woman's guide until next monday i'm your host shannon abels bonjour